Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi <clears throat> Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullah I understand the reality of sound energy providing energy to the hearts and soul I heard that silent zikr is more most powerful I want to know how silent zikr and reading not Quran manifest the energy please forgive if question is not appropriate Yeah I didn't understand that I heard the sound energy is powerful so <clears throat> what is the the khafi zikr the importance of the khafi zikr yeah that the sound and the manifestation is your internal resonance that the external sound has a reality so the shaitan makes somebody to hear a negative sound they become negative in their energy and then they begin to make a negative dhikr for heavens, they want you to hear heavenly sounds to affect your outer ear. And as soon as you're doing your zikr, you're making a resonance inside. So sound is, is not only audible but the sound and the resonance and frequency has nothing to do with the audible spectrum. That's why they can play sounds that you can't hear but somebody else can hear, different creatures can hear and they have immense effect. But the khafi zikr is immensely powerful because of the internal resonance that the one you go, Allah, Allah, Allah has a reality for the form. But the one whom is able to unlock that reality within their heart, Allah, Allah, Allah within their heart and they're doing it khafi silently, <coughs> the energy and the vibration they make is far greater <coughs> because the audible only is uh, an effect upon the ears and a little bit of your physicality and some inner reality. But the ones whom are able to do a khafi zikr, it's an internal energy and internal vibration that far more powerful than the external. And that's why the practices are most powerful for silent and khafi, those whom can do their zikr and their awrads uh, internally, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. So there's 40 Surah Fatiha to recite daily enough for any kind of severe sickness? InshaAllah. has an immense blessing <clears throat> that Allah is the one whom heals. Surah Fatiha has all of Holy Qur'an, is the source code for all of Qur'an. We said before, so you go back and, and watch the, the videos on the tafsir of Surat Al-Fatiha that from these holy seven verses are the fountain spring of the entire Qur'an. So, if any ayatul kareem exists within Surah Fatiha, so anybody whom continuously reciting the Siri Surat al Fatiha and all of its secrets, of course, then unlock immense powers upon the water and upon their food and upon uh, anything that they're reciting of that reality. So, it's an immense healing, but one has to always remember. Healing is in the hands of Allah not based on you taking a problem away. The healing is, is mental, 
the healing is uh, spiritual that you have to heal yourself from a difficulty, a pain and then you heal yourself from, from being impatient with Allah so that you have a, a sakina and tranquility within the heart that I prayed, I prayed and it didn't happen and you have to find your peace with Allah Not your aggression where it's not happening, it's not happening, now you're becoming aggressive with Allah and Divine Presence. It's not about Allah submitting to us, it's about we submit to Allah's time. So it has a time for everything. So those who patiently pray and they wait to see what Allah has for them. But those prayers also open a tranquility within the heart in which the servant is at peace with whatever test and difficulty Allah has written for them, they have to find a, a peace for that. Otherwise they just keep trying to change Allah's will and, and they want to read this awrad and this du'a and this and for what? So Fatiha and Surah Fatiha has everything within that reality, that should be enough for people inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum my dear Shaykh Wa Alaikum As Salaam Listening to your lectures gives my heart peace but how do you deal with people who have no empathy? Stay away. Uh, people who have no empathy then you have to keep a, a distance. If it's affecting you and, and they're cold and uh, what can you do? You have to accept people for who they are and depending upon what that relationship of that person, it, they are who they are. And uh, if they don't change and they don't become more compassionate and they don't open their hearts then what can you do? It's not uh, that we can change people but I can only change myself. So I try to surround myself with people whom have a Divinely heart, listen to the teachings, build the love for Prophet and uh, this way of realities inshaAllah. Write notes, the notes have a tremendous change on the energy of people and it's important to write and, and to be occupied with the writing and teaching and uh, absorbing the teachings of the shaykh, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Regarding your talk the other day, please yeah. forgive my ignorance but isn't Buddha a prophet as well? Isn't it one of the faith principles to honor all prophets? Isn't it the same Muhammadan light? No. Mm. That don't, don't mix yourself up with these things that Muhammadun Rasulullah is the gold and that not the same as anything else. If at that time these people had a, an understanding and a message by the time of Sayyidina Muhammad they were to have all moved into that reality. But what they have now is uh, definitely not connected with any messenger of Allah and then becomes uh, paganism and uh, many difficult and, and dangerous practices and principles within these faiths. So they're not to be mixed, so that's important to understand. So you know these are times in which we're describing many things are very dangerous that for example somebody goes and begins to learn Sufism, they say, I'm going to go do Reiki and do healing. Uh, Reiki because people don't see and don't understand they're calling upon Hindu jinn and they have given them mantras and recitations. Well you don't know what that is opening. So you're opening and calling and summonsing something and it's not Islam and it's not Tawheed and it's not from Prophet So then what happens? Because people don't see, they don't know what they're doing, they think they can mix everything. So imagine you're going to cook at home but I'm going to put a blindfold on you and you're going to keep putting your hand into your cupboard, take everything out and start throwing it in and say, this is going to be dinner for tonight. Nobody would eat that So that Allah knows what you put in your hand and pulled out. So because you don't see and the people who do see 
they don't call on other things, they don't practice other things. So somebody say, I went to this Buddhist temple and they gave me a mantra. But you don't know what they're giving as a mantra to recite. And these are not the mu'min jinn and these are nefarious jinn and they become hermaphrodite where you can't distinguish between male or female. And the ones whom very energized by them they begin to have no hair on their face, no hair on their eyebrows, no, no, there's not anything to do with Islam. And these times are very dangerous because they're summoning more of, of these energies. And these energies when they come and you don't know what they are, they create a great conflict with your faith and your practices. You bring them into yourself and into your home, you can't get rid of them. And then you don't understand why everything is going wrong is because when you want to bring this pure way of submission and all these spiritual pure beings and now they say, what is that you brought? And as a result the truth and falsehood they don't go together, right? So then you brought the truth into your life, you want to mix it with falsehood and then now say everything is going to be okay but the truth and the falsehood don't stay. Who's likely to go in this scenario? The devils they don't care about anything, they'll stay there. But who will go is the truth. The truth say, we don't mix with this garbage, we're out and they leave. And what you're stuck with is then the devils and they come more and they come more and they come more. So yeah, when they teach <coughs> that Gautama Buddha was an enlightened soul but he's dead and the people whom are there are not following him. They're not following that path of enlightenment, they're not following the principles and doctrines that he brought and now it's all been made up. And that's why the focus is the deen of Allah is Islam. Those whom accept it, alhamdulillah they'll be safe through these calamities. Those whom don't accept it <coughs> they're free to mix with whatever they want to mix but they'll find no safety and there's no power and no safety except in Allah and become more evident. Before it was just marketing, now it'll become more evident. If you don't use the ta'weez, you don't have the tawheed, you don't have this love for Prophet these things will attack and attack beyond people's imagination and, uh, and make immense difficulties on earth. <clears throat> so it won't have to be too, too difficult in marketing, people will understand what they've opened and that they can't get rid of it. So no, Reiki is not healing, Reiki is calling upon and summonsing different energies. So people whom are summonsing these different energies and praying to them, granting offerings to them, putting bowls of food for them and they don't know who they're calling. So that is immensely dangerous, just you think on it on a physical level. There's a guy in the alley, he's a crazy homeless man, well let's just bring him in. Why? You don't know he has a knife or some sort of weapon. You don't know who's who, so why would you do that to something you don't see? But when you make madad and you call upon Sayyidina Muhammad you call upon the, these righteous and noble shaykhs, you know whom you're dealing with, you know the purity of energy that you're dealing with. So these are dangerous times to, to you know make salad out of everything, mix and match of uh, putting in everything into a bowl, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum shaykh Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah There is evidence the aura, biofield, chakras may be intentionally used without permission by computing technologies. Would that be blocked by spiritual energy? Biotech thing, yeah, that was sound like a complicated question, I think we talked about Everything is an energy attack. When we describe that they have a weapon that they hit turkey with <clears throat> that creates an energy. They send the energy into the ionosphere and they redirect it down and it goes in and shakes the vein of the earth. 
And people are like, oh, what's that talking about? Your mobile phone does that to your brain every day. <clears throat> they made these technologies at the megahertz and the, the frequency of your cellular reality. I think what, between 2 to 5 megahertz when you choose your Wi-Fi? It says 2 megahertz, 5 megahertz, yeah. Did you know that's the cellular frequency for humans? So every device in your home is designed as a harp machine against you, right? You turn your phone on, it's coming after your brain cells. You turn your… and there's a device that you buy that you can go and check all the machines and it checks the, the, the energetic field and you, you see it, you put it next to something because it's sensing an immense amount of frequency coming out. Those frequencies are designed like a harp to shake your cellular level, to, to bring your vibration down. Shaitan knows if you vibrate high, he burns, you vibrate low, he enters. Didn't we see the matrix where in the end everybody was a battery? They put them in a pod and they plugged them in so many places and just fed in their mind that they're living on this earth and they go about their life. Well, Allah wanted to show us that, yeah, this is pretty much what people are going to become, right? They're going to put on goggles, they're going to sit in one place and they're not going to move and they're going to live through a screen and that will be it. And pretty much they became a pod somewhere and somebody delivers them a food, somebody delivers them a drink and they don't move. Allah showed us in these movies, that's what they're doing to you. So this is a whole energy course, that's why you have to buy the energy book, you have to buy the books, you have to participate in the curriculum, you have to study your shaykh's teachings and don't bounce around to 20 different shaykhs because then you don't learn him and you don't learn us. This, you get the books, you study the curriculum, get the meditation, get the energy book on, on what is angelic energy. And as a result you see everything has a vibration, now we're vibrating high or are we vibrating low? Everything is designed to destroy you. Turn on your phone, you're gonna get attacked. Turn on your computer, you're really gonna get attacked. You turn on your TV, they're coming after you. You turn on your microwave, they're gonna kill you. <laughs> everything, everything was designed to destroy us, this is Jihad al-Akbar. What Prophet described for us is a great fight is happening, everything is coming to destroy us. But then who's fighting back to build themselves? Then these are the people whom are trying to awaken their inner reality. They have to meditate, they have to vibrate at a higher frequency, they have to connect. So then they found that when you recite and I think even in the hadith of Prophet we'll pull the hadith of Ayatul Kursi that as soon as you recite Ayatul Kursi the way that Prophet described it is like an energy field that goes out and protects you for a number of homes and directions. And Mawlana Shaykh would describe that when you do zikr 70,000 homes in the area are being dressed by the zikr. What does that exactly mean? means the frequency of a shield that you're making is moving everywhere and dressing everything around you but most important it creates like a bubble of protection of energy. So when you have the zikr playing in the home an immense shield of protection is coming out. When you're reciting Qur'an and the ayatul kareem immense shield of energy is coming out. As soon as you're doing your meditation we said before your shield of energy is coming out and your children don't know how to do zikr but they love you. So they were hoping maybe you would know. So when they love you that's their madad, when you do your meditation is your madad and then a shield of energy is now around the home. So this is the whole teaching. But people want to say, oh let's not talk about energy, let's talk about salah. But then you'll lose everything because then salah compared to radio frequencies in a phone doesn't make any sense. So then people will say, oh we're safe because they don't understand the two logics. You don't have an equal… Uh, what do you call it math? 
your denominator is not equal, right? When we talk energy everything becomes equalized. Equal attack, you understood energy and now how to build your energy. So everything is equal in this discussion but if we keep it like their religious dogma, okay salah and mobile phone, well, how do you understand now what the, 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 the danger is? Well, what does that mean salah and then mobile phone? So that's why then shaitan fools these people and they think their salah is some sort of a protection. But they didn't understand energy, so salah is one form of protection, your wudu protects you against energies, your zikr protects you against energies. So then you have to teach people relevant to how they're being attacked, they are being attacked by energy. And if they don't know it, everything in your home, so they have a device you buy on Amazon that turns energy frequencies and you go everywhere and you can hear it. You know when you plug in your phone it immediately starts to vibrate an energy because the connection has a frequency and voltage coming out. As soon as it touches the phone it emanates that energy. The wireless earphone is continuously receiving a signal cooking your brain. So yeah, all these things are around us. If we're not building our power to push it out then definitely we're being you know hit by a harp and the, the one quaking is us. Death, heartache, heartbreak, uh, heart attacks, sicknesses, cancers, every cellular level of the body is being destroyed. So imagine now on a greater scale because I told you they have all of these technologies as small toys. So then the bigger ones say, why well, do we have to have only the toys? Let's make big ones where they turn a big dial and then they shake the earth. And these were the signs of Dajjal, he could bring rain where there's no water, he can bring earthquaking where there's no problem. These are all the signs of Dajjal, so these are the equipments that are clearly being used in the advent of his zuhur and his presence being known which for us is a great ocean of mischief and they're claiming the, their connection to the Holy Kaaba. And there's hadith that armies would enter into Mecca. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Can these devices also detect ghosts and jinns? Yeah, I would imagine they have these Ghostbuster shows, they say they have these frequency things and but I can tell you one thing is you don't need to detect them, I guarantee you they're all around you. So for somebody who believes, believe, you don't need to detect anything. Because I told you once you, you, you start to hear them they're not going to leave you alone until they drive you mad. So they're all around you, they're everywhere. So you don't need to detect them, you just need to know they're there. And then you need to have your wudu, keep your taweez, keep your spiritual practices, build the connection with the positive energy and the positive beings. So don't need to, to go into caves and hunt them and trying to, to put out a sound frequency to see they're there, of course they're there. Take it from the shaykh and guarantee they're all around your homes everywhere. And the ghost and those whom passed away and they walk the earth. If they for at any time feel that they can communicate with you they, comes and they come in tens of thousands of lost souls that just want to come and talk and chat and get you to communicate with their relatives. So you to just keep to your ibadah <laughs> and your worship, stay away from that door. You make your connection with the shaykhs and make your connections with the world of light and, and to improve that world of light and that connection inshaAllah. That's what's the focus and importance inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam So playing inappropriate music casually in the house, does it also invite demonic jinn into the house? Inappropriate music doesn't bring demonic but may bring inappropriate beings. So they come and uh, <clears throat> they're, they're in inappropriate belief systems. So 
as we think physical and spiritual are the same. Say I have an example, you have a neighbor who's very wild and very inappropriate and every time you want to play a specific song this neighbor is going to knock on your door and come and dance and jump in your living room. <laughs> Just happens and that they have an ability to do that. So you play the song, this neighbor comes jumping, dancing all over the place in your neighborhood, in your living room. So what the heck is that? This is very offensive, what are you doing there? And you turn it off, they leave. You turn it on, they come back. <coughs> so it means that the actions that we do ignite many different beings. Again this is your energy training. The, the, the pious they want Qur'an and salawat because they're living off of vibrations. They don't interfere with that form of sound at all, it actually hurts them. So they're vibrating, this is their sustenance. So when Qur'an and salawats are played and nasheeds and beatific sounds are played, they vibrate and feed off of that. Other ones you put a different vibration, what happens? They come. Their energy comes. As a result that negative energy comes but then you have to cleanse the space and again play your salawat and again put your, your positive. So no problem you have an understanding. Certain sounds you play it's going to bring a little bit of negativity or if they play very bad brings a lot of negativity but then they have to again cleanse the space with purified sounds. Actions and movements also do the same thing. When you move too much you spark an excitement within the nefarious beings. They're attracted to the vibration and the movement of people. So people have an energy. So before in sila training and this was a secret from Imam Ali salam, gave, given to the Asian Muslim countries who taught sila which was a Muslim form of martial arts. And I think it was the originating form of Shaolin which were 28 steps off of 28 huruf. So in their spiritual teachings which were taught by Imam Ali to them, they move with the huruf. So we said before in their Lam Alif they have a movement of the Lam Alif in which they bring out the reality of that huruf and surround themselves by these energies. So they know the huruf, they know the movement and as they're moving it, it's energy coming out all around them. Then with that energy they can fight, so it's energy training. Now imagine somebody wiggling and jiggling the wrong way, moving the wrong way, jumping up and down, children do, you're now making a different energy. So what happens? It's the opposite of the silat. So these spiritual masters they understood they would move a certain way because there's energy all in the room. How to bring the energy and manipulate the energy and then they use it for their martial arts, for their energy, for their protection. But then somebody jumping around all sorts of different types of energy, you're now summoning nefarious energies that come and then they're getting excited, inappropriately excited. So there's an immense reality in energies and if people know that their movement is attached to energy and the summonsing. So if you move properly based on silat and martial arts and huruf you summons very noble energies, noble mu'min beings that come and they're ignited like heavenly the, those qadim, the ones whom safeguard these huruf. Their energies come for those realities and then the same is the other side. Those whom have very inappropriate movements they summons very inappropriate uh, jinn and as a result they come, they spark the energy and everything inappropriate begins to happen. So this is all very sort of basic energy teachings and understandings. Don't ever disconnect ourselves from the energy world thinking you can do one thing but it doesn't have an energy effect. They're directly connected like a puppet. You go like this, something's happening in an energy field. So when we study the energy we understand that our movement is important. You're moving in salah, you're creating an energy force all around you. 
That's why Allah has us in Alif, Ha, Mim, Dal. Because of the barakah of Nabi Ahmad, they're moving in the huruf. The huruf is being activated by the qadim, the, the servants of that huruf. Every letter has a, a, a guardian. So when the servant is making salah and they're the form of Alif, the angel who's a guardian of Alif is dressing that servant out of their happiness and nobility. So means the one who makes prayer has an immensely noble dress of energy upon themselves. So yeah that's why we pray. So the people who don't understand and they have movements that are not controlled and then they ask, can we move like this and move like say, no you shouldn't because those movements are bringing energies that are not positive. And that's why Allah has us moving in the forms of salah because they bring noble energy, majestic energy, powerful energies inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Is that why Mulana Jalaluddin Rumi was teaching the whirling? Was that an energy for protection? Yeah that was a form of their… of the same reality. He was teaching them how to bring out the energy of the… of like a hadara that they had to circumambulate uh, with their heart and that they had to match their body in the movement of your heart. So they had many realities. We have the articles on the website nurmuhammad.com to go to the realities of the sama and whirling. So each of them were teaching the same reality in a different way. Naqshbandiya through muraqaba and reaching to the heart, uh, the rifai with hadara reaching to the heart and then the chalabis and mevlevi again circumambulating to reach to the heart. So it was all the same teaching and it was based on the same reality that your spiritual movement is that train your body to follow your heart. Not your heart have to follow your body and do everything it doesn't want to do. So that's why you circumambulate the heart. And then once you have the tarbiyah of following your heart and following what's appropriate for your heart then you live a life of service. So you're asking from Allah to receive. And at the same time you have to put a hand back down to give to creation. You can't ask Allah just to receive. Whatever you receive you have to give back. So you have to have one hand up, one hand down for people. So they become to learn that our life is for service, that I have to take from above and give to below. And that's a life of service. With that reality they were able to lift off the ground. Because the nafs became crushed and the Divine Spirit within them was uplifting. But that has a deep reality within just ourselves sitting and meditating that my electrons are also spinning and they spit, spin so fast it creates the hologram of who I am, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa When I contemplate what I see or what message I get in contemplating, can I share that with the shaykh or anyone else who is in our tariqah? Please forgive me if I've said anything wrong. Your Ooh. nazar is needed this beautiful night. Walaykum As Salaam, no worries, that don't share with anyone. <clears throat> Because otherwise the, sh the, the, the contemplation becomes nafsani. So again read the meditation book on when you contemplate and meditate and, and connecting it, it's to reach to an ocean of power, not to, to, to get an understanding, an image, a picture, reach to here, reach to there, get information for people, then you want to give people. Then before you know it your nafs is entering into every meditation and say, go tell this guy they're, they're not doing this right, go tell this one he's not doing this right. Then it becomes all over the place. The meditation was that, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I want to reach to the ocean of power, I see myself as nothing. So then I don't need to tell anyone about my nothingness but if you feel that you have to tell somebody then you're becoming something. So nobody ever emails that, Shaykh I'm nothing. 
that I, I reached the station of nothingness and I saw absolutely nothing. So that's what we're trying to achieve is nothing, I'm nothing. Not that I achieved this, I got this, I got that, then it become try and show off to the shaykh that you have to respect me differently, you know who I go in the presence of? So <laughs> that become very… that's why the shaykh doesn't want to hear anybody's dreams because we know how that door opens. You know they come in and say, you know who I am, you know what I saw, you know what I saw, you know like this, like this, this like saying, I, you know I have a lot of uh, medallions and rank, you have to treat me differently. So the old shaykhs they would say, oh, oh you did? Oh my god, who did you see? And so, oh I saw like this, I saw this one, I said this, okay. Then he would say, oh Haji Baba come, give him the rocks. And then the, the person would say, what? He says, yes. They had in the old times they had with the rocks from the washroom, they have to use rocks. And then the used rocks are in a bucket, then they would give this old used rocks and they would give to this big guy who has all these wonderful dreams and say, your duty in the dariga is to wash these rocks. <laughs> it's like, what? After all those things I told you of my dreams, it's especially after you told us those dreams <laughs> that you're so high, if that's who you are, then you, you definitely have to wash these rocks, these dirty rocks until they're so clean and then kiss each one. <laughs> so no, the shaykhs they always had, Mullah always had the discussions like that because big alams would come, you know, big, you know, the, this one is like a famous jurist, a famous this, famous muhaddis, famous uh, hafiz. And they would sit in the presence of the shaykh like, okay, give me all my keys, I'm here, I finally humbled myself, <laughs> they come to sit with you, <laughs> give me all my keys. He says, keys, oh come, come give him the bucket, <laughs> it's a bucket, do you know who I am? And they would get upset and say, exactly, that's exactly why the bucket because it seems like you're very big on yourself and that's, that's your hindrance to the Divinely Presence. So we don't want to go there, that's the way to avoid that is don't let the nafs get involved, don't let the nafs propagate, don't let the nafs try to show itself of who we are and the imaginal world and so inshaAllah. Allah help us all to, to, to be a nothing and, and to be in the status of nothingness to reach towards these oceans of realities inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi uh, Say last week it was discussion of companions and the sunnah dress, ring, cane, etc. Is there a companion related to the pen? Yeah, we have to wait for, for the month of the companions, <laughs> not that you just ask it, that that was the birthday of Imam Ali Salam in, on the 13th of Rajab and inshaAllah Imam Ali Salam inspired that the sunnah of the ring and the importance of the ring <coughs> controls an immense amount of might and majesty. So let us try to, to all have a sunnah ring and to fulfill that obligation and to build that love and reverence for Sayyidina Muhammad and the importance of the sunnah of Prophet inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the reality of Imam Hussain setting off on his journey to Karbala from Medina on the 28th of Rajab? Does it relate to the night of ascension in any way? Oh. I have no idea. But I would imagine that the, the command came <clears throat> and that to, to go with the entire family when all of Medina was begging Imam Hussain as salam to not go with the family. If you have to go, don't go, they're going to betray you, don't go with the family and said, no the command is coming that I must travel with my family and face whatever faith Allah has, has written for us. So I don't know, don't have any reference to that inshaAllah but whatever the command was for Imam Hussain salam then he fulfilled that command of Allah As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Holy Prophet said, in the end times protection will only be in Mecca, Medina and Sham. What is the spiritual significance of these locations? 
Yeah, you have to read the articles on Nur Muhammad. So we have, we have the importance of these locations and the articles on that. <clears throat> that what, what does uh, Mecca represent of the heart? What does Medina represent of the state of love and the soul? And the Shama Sharif uh, under the guidance and protection of awliya. So the one whom has a Mecca within their heart, that their heart has an immense love and clean and that they circumambulate their heart for that love of what Mecca represents. And Medina is the direction and the Qibla of their soul, that they have an immense uh, love for Sayyidina Muhammad and that they're attached and directed to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of keeping the companionship with Mecca and Medina then they should be under the companionship of awliya and that awliya represent the Shah Sharif. So that has an immense importance that for wherever we are we want to have Mecca, Medina and Shah Sharif within ourselves. Not that we're moving to the three locations but to be a servant of that reality that your heart has to be Mecca, your soul has to be Medina and that your entire wujud has to be Shama Sharif under the guidance of awliya. If we are under these three realities wherever we walk we are Mecca, Medina and Shama Sharif within our being. We, you be with whom you love, when you love those realities those realities are always with you. So that's an immense importance that the, the, the shaykh becomes a, a Mecca, that their heart becomes a Kaaba and a Qibla. And the reality of their direction is to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that the, the reality of their light is Muhammadiyoon. So and they kept the company of awliyaullah and they're surrounded by Shaykh Sharif and the reality of these awliya. So whom you love, love you and you carry them with you wherever you are. So in these last days and, and days of difficulty the servant has to have those realities. Their heart has to be like a Mecca in which it's circumambulating and purified and clean. And we even describe the inhabitants of the holy Kaaba. What makes the Kaaba holy is the presence of Prophet and 124,000 Prophets and saints and Sahabi and that's what makes the Kaaba to be holy. So our heart has to be like that, Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And Madinat Munawara is the immense love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad If you carry that love you carry Prophet with you everywhere you go, that's immensely powerful. And then our majlis and our associations are all Shama Sharif that we keep the association of awliya. We listen to them, we take their guidance, we're listening to the talks, we're writing from their realities, all of these things. These are important to write from these realities, inshaAllah. And to be noble scribes of this reality, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. How do we understand if an action we are inspired to take is a step of faith or a satanic trap to make us take a hit that is not right for us? Forgive my ignorance and blindness. No, you have to do your meditation and all the practices. <clears throat> Once you meditate and contemplate, you do your zikr and, and everything that we've described in the energy talks. And then you make a choice based on your connection with your heart and say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem and inshaAllah you, you make an effort towards that. But you have to have a meditation in which you connect with the shaykh, not talk about your dunya with the shaykh but you have to meditate to connect, to connect, to connect, feel the energy, do your aura, do your practices so that when you are a connected person means your heart has a connection. Then when you want to make a movement in something in dunya. Inshallah you, you make that movement and you can email help me at nurmuhammad.com and to reconfirm, I'm thinking of moving, I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of that and they, they you know seek guidance and if it's something they shaykh can answer they'll answer. If it's not appropriate 
for an answer then they'll tell you basically keep contemplating and, and search your heart because uh, the responsibility and the path has to be yours. The shaykh's not going to take all your questions and answer them for you, that would be too easy a life. Where should I go? What should I do? What job should I have? What university should I go? Which house should I buy? I mean, these are life choices you have to make, hopefully you're inspired for the right one and it doesn't become a test to become the wrong one. But either way you're going to learn from it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can we educate ourselves with martial arts? Educate? I don't think martial arts is an education but yeah, but you, you can do, that's why we talked about the sila and the energy. It's advised to be fit, to, to keep physical fitness, to take care of your health, to understand the martial arts and the principles of, of martial arts and, and defending yourself. So no problem with that, everyone has to understand how to defend themselves inshaAllah. Good, alhamdulillah. Inna shafi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyatan aliyya khasatan ruhi man tariqa galta khaliyika shan ashban Muhammad wa Isa al-Bukhari wa sa'ira wa sadatina wa sidaqina al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.